Okay, so hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about NPC with friends and foes. And this is joint work with Ferran Omri and Anand Paskin Chernyavsky. So I'll start with an example, and uh, specifically I'll talk about secure election. And let's say that we have three parties, and each of them is chosen between two candidates. And let's say that in this example, the parties know that uh, at most one of them is corrupted. And let's say that during this protocol, they figure out that the second party is uh, being malicious. So now the first and the third party, knowing that they are honest, uh, you, this weird protocol instructs them to exchange their inputs. And now each of those parties can locally compute who the winner is. However, now one of those parties, let's say that the third party, actually realizes who the first party voted for, which is problematic. We don't want to reveal who we voted for because later on this could lead to violence. Okay, so why is this allowed? The reason that this is allowed is because in secure multi-party computation, we only care about the view of the adversary. And we never ask about what uh, the honest party sees during the interaction. Okay, so uh, you might say uh, there are, no one actually constructs such protocols. But in fact, there are actually protocols that utilize this fact. And for example, there's the Turan protocol of Ishaital that uses this fact that the honest parties can reveal information to each other in order to minimize the RAM complexity of the protocol. Okay, so let's say that we ignore this type of protocols because they only use it to minimize the RAM complexity, and let's say that we're using only classical protocols like GMW or BGW. And even then, there is a problem uh, with, uh, say, secret sharing scheme. And the reason is that uh, the corrupted uh, party can send its share to the other honest parties allowing them to recover the original input of the other honest parties, which again, later on, would lead to violence. Which led me to talk about the uh, question in this research, research of whether we can extend the classical notion of security to also prevent leakage of information from one honest party to other honest parties, and perhaps even colluding subsets of honest parties. So let me talk about the most naive uh, way to try and solve this question. And we, this would simply be to take a protocol that can handle more malicious parties than what we require. And I claim that this won't do. So first, the first reason is that we lose efficiency. Second, if we still want to keep uh, certain guarantees, like say guaranteed output delivery, then this might be impossible. And later on, I will show you that three party coin tossing can actually be computed with uh, one malicious party and one semi honest party, assuming that they are not colluding. And finally, this doesn't even work in general. And even though standard protocol like GNW actually do satisfy this property when increasing the malicious uh, security threshold actually does help, there are protocols where this is not true. And intuitively, the reason is that even though we are dealing with stronger adversaries, the, their simulator is also stronger, which, uh, uh, which will be problematic in the reduction. Which leads me to talk about uh, our new security notion, which aims to solve these problems. Uh, we call this notion security with friends and foes, or fast security for short. And roughly, TH star fast security requires the following. So again, let's say that we have three parties. And we require that for any adversary, corrupting at most T parties, malicious adversary. In this example, it corrupts only one party. We want, it to be able to, we want to be able to simulate its view, just like in the standard security definition. Now, additionally, we require that any semi-honest adversary corrupting at most H star parties, in this example, again, this will only be one. We also want to be able to simulate its view. And we want to be able to simulate the, the view even if the adversary sent non-prescribed messages to the semi-honest party. And of course, I want to stress that we don't only care about simulating this specific semi-honest semi party, we also want to simulate any other possible set of semi-honest parties. So even the first party to be able to be simulatable. So we also introduced uh, several results regarding this new notion. Uh, the first one is uh, we provide a characterization. Specifically, we show that under standard assumption, any multi-party functionality can be computed with TH star fast security if and only if 2T plus H star is strictly smaller than the number of parties. Uh, we also investigate the run complexity requires to do this uh, sort of computation and show that assuming pseudo-random generators, we can compute any functionality with one one fast security in three rounds. And we can, in fact, even increase the threshold that we can deal with in, in the, those three rounds. 
However, if we want two rounds, then this is already impossible even for one one for security, which give evidence as to why in the Isha et al protocol, the honest parties had to reveal some information to other honest parties. And finally, we give comparisons to other definitions and uh, show that the standard security notion of T plus H star security doesn't imply FAF security as one would expect. And we even refine this, uh, this result and show that mixed security doesn't imply FAF security, where mixed security is very similar. We require that uh, we can simulate any one adversary that controls some parties maliciously and another subset semi-honestly, whereas in FAF security, these are two completely different entities, two adversaries that are not colluding. So now let me give you a more formal uh, definition of fast security and how we deal with all the subtleties. So the definition will follow the real versus ideal paradigm. And it will be convenient to view the semi-honest parties as, as if they are being corrupted by an adversary. And it's important to note that this adversary is not colluding with the malicious adversary. Uh, moreover, uh, we let the semi-honest party have an output just like honest parties, and the reason we do it is because this is necessary in order to protect them from the malicious adversary. And finally, in the real world, we consider adversaries that uh, can send non-prescribed messages to the semi-honest adversary, and they can even do it uh, after the protocol is already terminated. So now let me show you how we define the ideal world of fast security, and I'll give you two versions. One is full security with guaranteed auto delivery, and later on I'll show you how we define security with a bot. So here we have three parties. Uh, let's say that the left one is malicious, the middle one is semi-honest, and the right one is honest. In the ideal world, we have another trusted party that is uh, always honest, that will perform the computation. In this ideal world, in the first phase, the parties will send their inputs to the trusted party, or the malicious party can change its input. After that, the, malicious, the trusted party will uh, perform the computation and send each party its respective part of the output. So far, this is just the standard ideal world. However, here comes the new stuff where we require that the malicious adversary will send its entire ideal world view to the semi-honest party, uh, which includes uh, its input, its auxiliary information, its randomness, and the output it received from the trusted party. And the reason we are requiring to, to do this is because in the real world, nothing prevents it from sending its entire view to the semi-honest parties. So in order to handle those kinds of adversaries, we require the, the similar to, to also send its information to the semi-honest simulator. And lastly, we need to define the outputs. So the malicious party will output some view, the semi-honest party will output a view and whatever it received from the trusted party, while the honest party output whatever it received from the trusted party. Okay, so now let me show you how we define security with a bot. So again, we have uh, the same three parties and the trusted party. And in the first phase, again, everyone just sends its input. After that, the trusted party will perform the computation. And in security with a bot, it will first send an output only to the adversary. And based on this information alone, the adversary will later need to decide whether the other parties can receive the output or not. However, in fast security, uh, the definition that we give also uh, states that uh, the semi-honest uh, party to also receive an output in the ideal world. And the reason is that we want to handle protocols where some of the honest parties might learn uh, some information on the output. However, they will not uh, output it as their output, but rather they will abort. However, in the ideal world, they will learn it in order to simulate it. And so from here, the, the, the definition of the ideal world follows the standard way. First, the malicious party will send its ideal world view to the semi-honest party. And then it will say to the trusted party either to continue or abort which based on that will either give the output to the honest party or tell it to a bot, and to the semi-honest party will tell it whatever it received from the adversary, either continue or a bot. And based on this information, each party will output whatever it needs to output, which is either a view or whatever it received from the trusted party. Given that, we can now define the security definition of our security. And here we have two flavors of security. The, the first weaker one, requires that the view of the malicious party and the output of both the honest and the semi-honest parties to be roughly the same in both the real and the ideal world. 
And the second requirement is that the view of the same Ionis party and the output of the Ionis party to be roughly the same, again, in both the real and the ideal world. And a stronger notion of security requires that the joint uh, distribution of all three random variables to look roughly the same in both the real and the ideal world. So a natural question to ask is whether or not uh, the weaker uh, security notion and the stronger security notion are actually equivalent. And let me show you that the, this is not the case. So for this example, let me consider the secure channel function where the first party sends its input to the second party without the first par third party learning anything about it. And let's consider the following protocol. So the first party has the, an input and it will first compute a commitment, which it then broadcasts to both parties and uh, then also send its input to the, uh, to the second party, which it will then output. So I claim that this is a uh, weak fast secure, this protocol, yet it's not strong fast secure. And to give you a taste as to why this is weak fast secure, let's assume that the bottom left part is malicious and the bottom right part is uh, semi-honest. So why, why can we simulate it? So the malicious simulator will simply output a commitment of zero, while the semi-honest simulator will output a commitment of X and X, and whatever messages it received from the malicious party. And that's it. However, in order to achieve strong security, uh, we need that both simulators to output exactly the same commitments, which is impossible in the ideal world. So now in the time that I have left, I want to talk uh, about in more details about one of the results uh, that I showed you earlier. Specifically, I want to talk about the characterization. And let's start with the positive direction. So let's assume that uh, 2t plus h star is strictly smaller than the number of parties, and uh, we'll construct a protocol. And the idea is to use player elimination technique, which goes as follows. First, we show that the GMW protocol uh, achieves fast security with identifiable robot, where identifiable robot is, very, is exactly the same as uh, security with a bot, only that if the malicious party, the malicious uh, adversary decided to abort, then it must reveal the identity of one of the corrupted parties. So now the parties uh, will compute an M minus T out of M secret sharing scheme of the output using the GMW protocol. And if there was an abort, then they have the identity of a corrupted party. They can throw it away, give it some default uh, value as an input, and restart. Otherwise, the honest, the uncorrupted parties have enough information in order to reconstruct the output, uh, so they would do it. So why is this protocol secure? Well, notice that the joint view of the adversary and the semi-honest parties is, by assumption, strictly less than the number of corrupted, the number of shells required to perform the computation. So, what are the properties of this uh, protocol? So, notice that the reduction to security with identifiable abort actually admits strong fast security. However, the entire protocol achieves only weak fast security. And the reason is that uh, because the GMW protocol achieves uh, weak fast security, and that goes to back to the commitment scheme used in the GMW protocol. However, this protocol actually sometimes admits fast security for even higher threshold than what uh, was stated in the theorem. And this is for specific functionality, such as coin tossing with uh, any uncorrupted majority. So H star can be whatever we want, uh, but T must be strictly less than half of the parties. And we can even compute with input functionalities like three party X or with one one fast security. So let me talk uh, a bit about the negative direction. And specifically, I will talk about the impossibility of three parties uh, with one one fast security. And I will show you an example of functionality that cannot be computed in this set. So let's call this uh, three parties A, B, and C. And we consider the following functionality. So A and C each will hold a string A and C respectively, and B will supposedly hold a one word permutation of each of, all of those strings. And if it does hold a one word permutation of those strings, then the output of all parties will be A and C. Otherwise, no party will learn anything. And the idea is that in the ideal world, if A is malicious and it changes its input, then a semi-honest B has no information whatsoever on C other than a one word permutation of it, so it will not be able to recover it. And furthermore, in the real world, any R on, for any R on protocol, there is always a round uh, where one of uh, the parties A and B or B and C can recover the output with significantly better probability than the other pair. And the way to prove this is a simple averaging argument. 
So using these two observations, we can use the following, we can uh, do the following argument. So first assume without loss of generality that A and B are the pair that can recover uh, the output to significantly better probability. So what will the attacker do? It will corrupt A, it will act honestly until I round I, it will abort, and only after the protocol had ended, it will send the, its entire view to B. So let's compare the real and ideal uh, world. So why can't we distinguish, uh, why can we distinguish between the two worlds? So first, let's P denote the probability that B and C can recover AC in the real world. So by definition, C will output A and C with probability P. However, that, what does that tell us about the ideal world? Since the only way for C to obtain this output, for the honest C to obtain A and C, is for the malicious A to send its original input, this means that the malicious adversary that corrupts A will send its original input with probability that is roughly P. However, now what we can say about the semi-honest party B is that by our uh, previous observation, uh, the only way for it to recover C is for A to send its original input, because otherwise it only holds the one or permutation of C. So the probability that B can recover C is again roughly P. However, as we already stated, in the real world, B can recover the output C with probability that it's significantly higher than P, which gives us a clear way to distinguish the real and the ideal world. So if we want to extend this to more parties, then we can use a standard player partitioning argument. However, what I want to stress is that this uh, argument actually rules out even fair computation, where fair computation roughly requires that either all parties learn the output or none of them do. And the reason is that because for the functionality that we consider, having the malicious simulator abort is exactly the same as changing the input. And furthermore, the attacker that we introduced uh, is actually independent of the adversary's view, which means that we can actually apply this attack even while assuming that the parties have access to a simultaneous broadcast channel. So to summarize, we introduced a new security notion, which we call security with friends and foes, which aims to protect honest parties from other honest parties. And we believe it to be interesting from both theoretical and practical perspectives. And we also proved some various results regarding these new notions, which include characterization of when we can compute any functionality and when we cannot. We also investigate the round complexity, showing that three, uh, three rounds is suffices for many interesting uh, thresholds, however, two rounds it's impossible. And we also give comparison to other standard definition. And that's it. Thank you for listening.